Bruchim Aboyim. We are now on the second lecture on the Haggadah. Um, before we continue with the, uh, we're dealing now with the plate, the Seder plate, and we finished off with Matzah, uh, which again alluded to the Chachma, Bina, and Das of uh, the seminal flash of wisdom and uh, knowledge, understanding and knowledge. There's one question that I'd like to deal with as to why is it that we, the prohibition of eating matzah, pardon me, chometz, something that's leavened on Passover, on Pesach, is grave. It's the greatest form of punishment called chorus, excision. So since the sin is so grave, why don't we just eat potatoes? We'll spend a week and eat potatoes. Why have matzah at all? Why deal with something that could become leavened, that could become chametz? So, why, why just that? Why, why that? Why take the why take the possibility? The Rebbe gives a very interesting idea, and what he says is that it's God's intent not for us to separate ourselves from the world, to eat potatoes all the time, to separate ourselves, go up on a mountain in Tibet, and live divorced from the world, even a ghetto. A ghetto is really a Jewish concept of religious Jews wanting to separate themselves. What the Rebbe says is what God wants us to do is to live into the world, to be part of the world, and at the same time to remain matzah, to be able to live within that, to make the world better, not to divorce ourselves from the world. And that's what the matzah symbolizes, and the idea of eating matzah and not potatoes to make sure that we stay with the world, we elevate the world, we're a part of the world, not divorced from the world. So continuing with the Seder plate, um, there are certain parts, people in Judaism, that if you look at a Seder plate, you'll see it has a circle of the six items. Everybody has six items on the plate. Um, according to Hasidus and the Kabbalah, there are three and three that are shaped like a segel, three dots and three dots. Uh, a segel is something like a skula, meaning a treasure. So Kabbalistically, it breaks up. We know that, as we mentioned before, the ten traits God takes upon himself. The first three are intellectual, Chabad, which we talked about last week. The next seven are emotional. Six, which are masculine, and then the seventh, Malchut, which is feminine. So the first three of Chesed, Gevura, and Tiferes, which is kindness, severity and beauty, which also correspond to the human body, right arm, left arm, trunk. And then Netzach Hod Yisod, which is splendor, um, victory, splendor, and foundation, again, which coincide to the right leg, left leg, and male genitalia. And then Malchut, the only feminine trait, is that of the womb, the woman's genitalia, in the sense of her being the true giver of taking a drop of sperm and giving back a child. And these, this is how the, the attributes of God that he takes upon himself with the creation of the world are defined. So the plate does goes through the same thing of the three and three. And the um, rabbis instituted that we have two cooked foods before us during the recitation of the Haggadah uh, to commemorate the two sacrifices that our ancestors took part of in temple times. So on the right-hand side, we have zroa, which is the uh, shank bone. Many people will use a neck bone of a chicken. Then the baits is the egg, and then the mora. For the mora, many people will use horseradish, uh, a stick of horseradish. And um, the next three are the charosis, which is the combination of the apples, some use, use uh, even pears and nuts and seasoning, um, cinnamon, and wine, red wine. Uh, again, which is the uh, netzach, the victory, and then you sow, pardon me, and then netzach, netzach hod is the karpas, the vegetable. People will use things as a potato, cooked potato, celery. And then the hazeris, again, which many people will use, is either grated horseradish and or many people will use romaine lettuce. And we'll talk a little bit about these things. So the zroa, which alludes to the Korban Pesach, the Paschal offering, 
alludes to the fact of the outstretched hand with the miracles that God did to save the nation of Israel while they were in Egypt. The, um, and that's again alluded to by the shank bone and or the neck bone, some meat on it. The, uh, the beitza corresponds to the korban chagiga. That was the main part of the meal that was used. Um, again, the carbon Pesach was as a dessert at the end of the meal, unless you had a few people, could be the body. But for the most part, it was used as a dessert. That's what we do in the Afikoman is in lieu of the carbon Pesach. So the carbon Chagiga, the Aramaic word Bea, also means desire. That God desired to liberate us with an outstretched arm. Those are those two. Now the egg has been um, interpreted as a sign of God's kindness to the nation of Israel. The Aramaic term for egg bea suggests barach mona mifrak yasana, that it should please God to redeem us based on the cow bone, the Elias Hakata. Also, Rashir Gunn suggests that the bone and egg symbolize um, Moshe Rabbeinu, pardon me, Aaron first is chesed, kindness. Moshe Rabbeinu is gevura, severity. There used to be a custom, interestingly enough, of adding a piece of fish in the memory of Miriam to allude to Tznius, which is modesty, symbolized by the fish dwelling in the depths of the water. Also, others see meat, egg, and fish as symbols of the three special foods that will be offered in the world to come based on the Oser Gaonim. Now, the third item on the plate being the Mara. Uh, Mara is bitter. Again, bitter, not necessarily bad. That we have kindness, on one side, strength on the other side, which brings us what we call the attribute of Tiferis, which is beauty, or Emet, which is truth. Again, no pain, no gain. So even though we look at something that's a little unpleasant as something bad, it's sometimes bitter makes us better, and that becomes a key. Now, the Harosis, uh, the word Harosis, again, which we said was the apples and cinnamon mixed with the red wine, that um, means sharp, haros means sharp and acidic, also crushed, a crushed veg vegetable in Aramaic. It also any dip, me alludes to any dip food. As we know, we dip the mar in the harosis, one of the two dippings that we have at the Seder. From the word cheres, which is earthenware, in memory of the bricks that the nation of Israel had to make in Egypt. Again, and also harosis means brick, based on... Uh, or Mordechai Eros. Now, there's also the Gemara in Talmud Yerushalmi says that it's mixed with red wine alluding to the blood of the first plague. As we know, the first plague that was brought upon the Egyptians was the plague of blood. It's also the blood of your, of your young children. The parol bathed in their blood uh, to be cured from a skin disease. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And also, again, in lieu of the bricks, the uh, karpas, which is the uh, vegetable, again, celery or parsley, boiled potatoes. Again, that's dipped into the salt water. Again, as allude to the tears that the Jews said, shed. And then the chazeris, uh, which many people use as um, romaine lettuce. Now, the le word for lettuce in Hebrew is chasa, limited to the word chas, meaning pity, that God showed us pity when he took us out of Egypt. A book in the book of heritage. Now, so that gives us the six items that are on the plate itself. Um, and then the seventh item that of the to make up the ten spheros again is the plate which is holding everything. Again, which alludes to the woman, uh, Malchus, the feminine trait. And that becomes so they have seven, the plate is one, the six items on the plate, the three matzahs. And that gives us the ten items that we're dealing with. And again, this concept of the spherot and also the ten sayings which the world was created. Now, what we call the um, ritual that we follow on Pesach, that we read the Haggadah, we call it a Seder. So why the Seder? So we call it a Seder that everything we do tonight must be done in a special order. Uh, according to Shach, also, why do we ask questions? The Torah states that when your son will ask. And we answer, and you shall tell him. That's where we get the word again, Haggadah. 
Also, when a person asks a question and you give him an answer, he remembers it much better than just hearing a statement. Uh, again, because many times when people are told something that they haven't asked, there's really no interest. So we're really dealing with something that was, has been asked already. Also, nothing is arbitrary. Everything follows what we call a divine plan, based on the base Mordechai. Also, Pesach sets the order, as we mentioned, the Seder. Uh, the word Seder means an order for all the other holidays of the year. Again, based in the to a book of heritage. Now, as I mentioned before, there are f four mitzvahs, four commandments that are, on, are incumbent upon us on the day of Pesach. Two are rabbinic, two are Torahic. The two uh, Torahic mitzvahs are the matzah, which we have today, and also the Haggadah of telling the story. The two rabbinic are the yayin, four cups of wine. There is no Torah commandment to drink four cups of wine. This is, comes from our rabbis. And also the mor, even though which in the time of the temple, when you would have the, uh, as I say, the, uh, ro the roast beef sandwich with horseradish, so to speak, matzah, mor, and carbon pesach, then it was Torahic. Today, it's more symbolic of what it used to be. Now, there are 15 items that we go through which is uh, the order of the Haggadah. And I'm going to read them off and explain each one very, very quickly. So the first thing we do is make Kiddush. We sanctify the day with the recitation of Kiddush. Then we have Orchatz, and that is we wash our hands for the vegetable that we're going to have without a blessing. Then we have Karpas, that we eat the vegetable and uh, dip it in salt water. Um, then we have Yachas, breaking the middle matzah and putting it away for the Afikoman. Magid, the narrative of the story of the exodus from Egypt. Then we have Rokhtza, the washing for the, for the hands, again with a blessing before partaking of the matzah. Then we have Motzi, reciting the blessing over the matzah. And also matzah, we have a special blessing that is over and above what we normally do. We normally make a blessing on bread. Uh, tonight we make the blessing both on the bread but also on matzah, another blessing. Then mora, we eat the better, bitter herbs with a blessing. Then korach, we eat the sandwich based on hill of the bitter herbs with the matzah. Then we have shulchan orach, we have the meal. Tzafon, again we eat the afikoman that was hidden, tzafon being hidden. And in fact, hidden that the exile was only the beginning of the process of the redemption. And part of it is actually, even today, still hidden. We haven't seen the final end. Begins with the second part of the Seder, which is dedicated to the future redemption. Again, that which is hidden from us, which we don't know, that should come quickly in its time. Then we have the word Baruch, and that is the Birchat HaMazon, the blessings that we make after we have had bread, as we do on any time that we partake of bread. Then we have the second part of the Hallel, uh, again, which is the Hallel of Redemption. And then Nirza, a prayer that God accept our observance and speedily send the Messiah may come quickly in our time. Now, there is one other ritual that's not mentioned, which is interesting. And that is the, um, we have an egg, almost, it's a custom to have a, a whole egg. And some people will dip that into the salt water which is really, for the most part, incorrect. Because we know with the, with the four questions, one of them is, why do we dip twice? All the nights we don't dip at all. This night we dip twice. So the two times that we dip is the mora in the chorosis, and the other time is the vegetable into the salt water. So if you take the egg and you dip that into the salt water, you now have three dippings. So what people do is they will put salt water on the egg and eat it in that way. But why an egg? So, for one, the egg um, alludes to mourning, that we know that a mourner has no beginning, no end, no mouth. The world is a circle, so this is something that's generally given to a mourner. Also, when a creature comes into this world through a live birth, it's basically complete. An egg, on the other hand, appears as complete, However, it is incomplete, and it is only completes its development when the little bird, the chick, is hatched. And the egg is analogous to our redemption from the Egyptian bondage. And though it appeared complete, the Jews left Egypt, they were no longer slaves, it was only fully realized 
when the nation has received the Torah 50 days later, which transformed them from an ordinary people to God's holy nation. So that becomes the idea. The main thing they were redeemed from Egypt from was the goal of being going to Mount Sinai to receive the Torah. In fact, the whole world waited with bated breath because the only reason why the world existed was for the Jews to accept the Torah. And that's why God has lifted the mountain at Mount Sinai. That, and the whole world waited. There was not a, not, a, not a sound in the whole world waiting for the Jews to accept the Torah. Had they not have accepted the Torah of Kabbalah, the world would have reverted back to emptiness and void. So the whole world waited for their answer. Now there are four cups of wine that are alluded to for the, for the Kiddush, for the Magid. Kiddush is in lieu of Sarah, our mother Sarah. Magid, second cup is Rivka. The barach, we, the cup that we have on the meal when we bench is Rachel. And the, the last cup for the Hallel alludes to Leah. Again, the four mothers of the nation of Israel. Now, these 15 stages allude to the name of God. Uh, that is the Yud and the He. Uh, the first two letters of God's name of mercy. Uh, which our sages of Kabbalah associate with Chachma and Bina with wisdom and understanding, which give birth, their mother and father giving birth to uh, Das, which is knowledge. Um, the God created this world uh, with the hay and the world above with the yud. And uh, again, God's humility and the hay has a little opening for a bal tshuva to be able to come back, gives an opening for him. Uh, again, so the two of them, the yud has numerical value of 10 the hay has numerical value of five, alludes to the 15 steps that we had just mentioned. Also alludes to the 15 steps that were um, in the Holy Temple, which the Levium would ascend in the temple when they, they served in their capacity of uh, singers and musicians, and when sacrifices were brought, from which Dabar Melech wrote the 15 Shir HaMalot, that are from, uh, the, from Psalm 120 through 134. And based on Elias uh, um, Haggadah. Now, in addition to the matzah, it says that a Jew is like a dough, the dough from which matzah is baked, that as long as one works and needs it, it is fine. Left unattended, it becomes chametz. Uh, so this becomes the important thing. Also, that we know that this is called the world of Asiya, the world of action. That... Um, we say in the Shema, second parak of the Shema every day, Li'avos Hashem Elokeinu, to love your Lord, your God. Ula Avdo, and to serve Him. Loving God's not enough. There has to be connected to an action. And this becomes the idea of matzah. The matzah only remains matzah as long as you work it. When you stop working, it will automatically rise. And so too with us. That as long as we're working on ourselves, then the world is fine. And we're connected to God. Otherwise, we rise and ego takes over, which God abhors. Um, we're going to continue now with the uh, Kiddush, which is the first part of the ritual. So now the Seder begins. Uh, everybody uh, has, fills their cup. And again, you should not fill your own cup. Everyone today is considered like a king, and that's one of the reasons why we lean at the same time. In this way, so everyone should fill someone else's cup. And this shows a, a, a symbol of majesty on this evening. Now, the first blessing we're really going to make, uh, it depends whether, whether the first Seder is on Shabbos or not this year, or will be. Uh, so we'll start with the prayer of Yom HaShishi as we would on any Shabbos. But the blessing on the um, Kiddush is on wine. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the question becomes, Borpia Guffin, why wine? Why do we make the blessing on wine more than anything else? Number one is red wine is preferable. Um, it's a reminder of the 300 children uh, whose blood Paro would bathe in daily. Paro was uh, diagnosed with a skin disease, a fatal skin disease. And he tried every cure he could. And if astrologers told him that, uh, that if he bathed in the blood of uh, human blood of children, that that would cure him. So he killed 150 babies in the morning and 150 in the evening and bathed in their blood. This was actually a greater travesty, more difficult for the Jews to accept than even having their newborn children thrown in the Nile. Because a newborn child, though it is 
a very difficult act to accept. You haven't attached yourself to the child. These were older children that you've already formed a relationship with, which is even more difficult. And uh, in order to stop Paro from doing this, God cured Paro of his skin disease. And we'll talk about it later, how the connection between Paro and the nation of Israel as to why God didn't just kill Paro to save the nation. Why is it that he cured Paro in order to do that? Um, and also the first plague, as we know, was the plague of blood. Also one of the, um, the, the blood of the Paschal offering that was put on the doorpost. And also the second blood that was put, that was put on the doorpost was the blood of circumcision. Jews could not eat of the Paschal offering. In fact, it was even all the way through the temples when they brought the Paschal offering. No one who was uncircumcised could eat from the Paschal offering. So all the Jews had to be circumcised before they could partake of the uh, meat of the Paschal offering. And we say at a circumcision even today, but the Maya Chayi, but the Maya Chayi, by your blood you should live, by your blood you should live, twice. One alluding to the Paschal offering and one to the the uh, blood of the circumcision. And again, these were put on the doorpost so that the um, Jews would be saved from the plague of the firstborns. Um, so again, so why, why wine? After, so one of the reasons given is that grapes grow in a cluster, which is uh, an allusion to octus of unity, um, which was a, a necessity for any nation, but especially the nation of Israel accepting the Torah. It's interesting, they tell a story of uh, the apple, the pear, and the orange that came before God complained that, it's, that they said, why is it that the small grape is the king of all beverages, that all other beverages have one single blessing that includes them all, a shahakol nieb baro, everything was created according to his will. Um, and wine has its own unique blessing. If you make that blessing, it covers everything. But wine, berepia geffen, things that from the fruit of the vine. Why, why that? And they complain. And they said the grape is smaller and we give more juice and it's sweeter. Why does that, why does the grape have this special preference, the king of all beverages? And God said again, because they grow in clusters, they grow together and there's peace between them. And this is the idea. Also time does not spoil them unless they're inferior. But if you have superior grapes, wine, they only get better with time. Also, they have to be crushed to release their bounty, and so to a Jew, though through our difficulties, we become stronger. Again, as we mentioned before, no pain, no gain. It's one of the reasons why we were put in Egypt in the crucible, to make us strong in, in a united nation. Uh, also, Yain has a numerical value of 70, which alludes to the 70 souls that came down to Egypt with Yaakov Avinu, and that began the Egyptian uh, exile. Also, we know that the world is connected to these 70 souls with the 70 nations. Also, the word sowed, which is secret or foundation, has the same numerical value as 70. That wine brings out the essence of a Jew. Nichnas yayin yotza sowed, that if you take wine, the secrets come out, or the foundation. And the foundation of a Jew is v'yahavta You should love your friend as yourself. Again, the essence of being a Jew. Now, what we have is, um, we make Kiddush on this wine. And the first and the third cup, there are four cups of wine that we have on this night, a requirement. And the first and third cup connect to the blessing of Kiddush, and then the Birchat Amazon, what we call the blessing after the meal. The second and the fourth cup both connect to the Hallel, the praise of God, the first part of the, of the redemption, of, and then the second part of the future redemption, based on the Book of Heritage. Four cups also allude to the four expressions of redemption that we find in the Torah for the redemption of Egypt. The fourth time the word kos, cup, is mentioned by the butler in his dream that he tells Yosef, that Yosef interprets, which brings about Yosef's freedom from prison. In fact, the word kos has a numerical value of 86, which alludes to Elohim, God of justice, the God who created the world, Barashas bara Elohim, numerical value of 86, also the word hateva, which is nature. Also alludes to the four exiles from Babel, Babylon, Madai, Persia, Yavan, Greece, and Edom um, from uh, Rome. Also alludes to the four worlds, 
about Sila, Spriya, Yitzira, and Asiya, of the world of emanation, the world of emanation, creation, formation, and action, based on Agra, also the form mother is based on Maral, uh, of, of the nation, the form merits that the Jews were saved from, by, uh, by, from Egypt by, for, which is they didn't change their language, their clothing, or their names, and also, they didn't speak Lush and Hard based on the soccer. It doesn't mean that everyone walked around in a long coat and a furry hat and that everybody's name was Chaim and uh, they spoke Ivrit. Uh, what it means is that they spoke Egyptian, but they didn't speak vulgar. It means that they wore Egyptian clothing, but they were modest. And it means that they didn't give their children's names of, of uh of the, of the idols. Some people think that Christopher is a good name. It's not a Jewish name. So there's names that you don't give to a Jewish child. And also the fact that they didn't speak Lashon Hara, the proof being that the only people that are mentioned speaking Lashon Hara were Dustin and Aviran about Moshe being one, ex one thing which was the exception, not the rule. Lutz of the Ford Sitzes for cuts of retribution that God will reign on the nations for persecuting the nation of Israel. And also God's name, the Yud Kei that we don't mention, we say Hashem in lieu of it, that uh, again is the God name of mercy. Now it's interesting, one of the problems we have, how could God, we know during the plague of ninth plague of darkness, four-fifths of the Jews die in Egypt, which seems very strange and also very cruel. How is it that our benevolent God who created a world of kindness could wipe out four-fifths of the Jews? So there were, who were the Jews in Egypt? They were four generations. Four generations that angered God with their behavior. First one was the generation of Enosh. The first generation to serve idols. Um, the second generation was that of the Mabel of the flood. Third generation of the dispersion of Bavel. The fourth generation was that of Sodom and Amorah. These four generations were reincarnated in the people who were enslaved in Egypt, and the Egyptian slavery was a form of elevation and atonement for them. So the four expressions of redemption correspond to the redemptions of these four generations that needed to become spiritually elevated through being in Egypt. In fact, the first letters of the verse, Potsesi Yeschem Mitachas Sivlos, and I will take you out from under the Burden, or the, the, the of, uh, of, actually of Egypt, which would be Sivlos. Take the word Vitesi, with the hay is Hafla, Haflaga for dispersion. Itchem and Aleph, Enosh, the generation of Enosh. The Mem from Mitachas is the Mabel, the flood. And Sivlos is, is, can be a Samach, is Sodom, again, based on uh, the commentaries on this. Also, why did the rabbis choose wine as a question of redemption? that drinking wine is different from partaking in any other type of food or drink. If one eats more uh, than one piece of matzo or any other type of food, the second serving does not affect the person any different than the first. However, when a person drinks wine, each cup he drinks affects him differently. A person will feel different after drinking two cups of wine than after drinking one or three. King David tells us that wine, the ayin yismach lavav enosh, that wine rejoices the heart of a man, the lowest of men, with that term, to heal him. The sense of joy increases with each cup of wine a person drinks. Therefore, wine is the only food item that can accurately symbolize the redemptive process and alludes to the Torah's four expressions of redemption, which are each special and unique based on Yitzchak's sender. Now, everyone is required by the rabbis to drink four cups of wine. These four cups, therefore, do belong together as one group. Consequently, we do not make a concluding blessing after drinking each one, since they are connected one to another, based on Rabbi Gon. As but so, the question becomes: So, why do we make a bless? Why do we make a special blessing before drinking each cup? The answer given is that each cup has a significance of its own, and is as though each one were a distinct experience. Again, the Rift calls each cup a mitzvah by itself. And Rav Shinshu says that each cup symbolizes a new and further stage of redemption, but does not by itself represent a complete redemption. And I think what we'll do is we'll stop here, and we'll continue next uh, time we get together with the Kiddush and the beginning of the Seder. Thank you for coming.